yourself and uh, uh, tell us all where you're, you're telling from and please tell us a story. Uh, you got to turn your mic on. Okay, hi everybody. It's really wonderful to be here. I um, live in a small village uh, or a small town about an hour and a half outside of Cape Town. And uh, it's a, a very hot summer's day. Um, and uh, it's a really lovely time to tell a story. Um, I am a drama teacher, but I've been doing a lot of support for teachers, emotional support with teachers through storytelling. And uh, this is one of the stories that I told with a group of teachers um, that actually I first heard from Jilly Southwood, who joined the previous session from South Africa. So my story is called The Name of the Tree, and it's a, um, a new translation by Cecilia Barker Lotteridge. And it goes like this. It's going to be an interactive story. So please, when you are asked to, um, to give advice to characters, if you could just write it in the chat line, that would be fantastic. All right, our story begins. Once, long ago in the land of the flat plains, there was great hunger. There had been no rain for months. The grass was, gray, was brown and the ground was hard. The animals, the gazelle, the zebra, the giraffe, the monkey, the tortoise, the elephant, and many others were so hungry, they didn't know what to do anymore. They got together and decided to trek across the great African plain to a place where there was water, where there was food. They left behind the king because the lion didn't travel. He stayed on his rock under the hills and expected everybody to serve him. At last, they set off and they traveled many, many, days across the flat African plain. At last, they saw in the distance a small bump on the edge of the plain. And as they drew closer, they could see it was a tree which grew bigger and bigger and bigger the closer they got to it. When they eventually reached the tree, they saw that it was ginormous. It was taller than the tallest giraffe. The trunk was so smooth that not even a monkey could climb it. But in the boughs of the tree was fruit. It was as if the whole fruit of the whole world was being carried by this tree. It was they had fruit as red as pomegranates, as green as melons, as yellow as mangoes, and as purple as plums. And it smelt like all the fruits of the world gathered in one place. But what were the animals going to do? Please help them. How are they going to get the fruit? Can you help? Can you possibly give them any advice as to how they're going to get this fruit? I'm having a look to see in the chat section. How are they going to get it? They thought and thought, and nobody could tell them exactly what to do. Eventually, one old tortoise spoke up. My great, great, great grandfather remember, told me about this, a time very similar to this, where there was no rain, where the ground was hard, and there was no food. 
and he told me that there was a special tree but and it carried fruit but it would only bend its boughs if you knew its name who would know it wondered the animals who would know the king's name the tree's name the king of course I'll go, said Gazelle. I'm the fastest. I know I can get there and back in a shot. He went off before anybody could even argue with him. He shot across that plane. He was going so fast. He looked like an arrow shot from a bow. He got to the king panting. <sighs> when he reached the king, who was sitting on a rock under a baobab tree near the river, the king was very calm, not a hair out of place. Oh, majesty, said Gazelle, please, can you tell us the name of the tree bearing all the fruit of the world? I can. It is Ungali. Do not forget Ungali. And make sure, Gazelle, you do not forget, because I'm not going to tell any other animal. Gazelle said, not a problem. I know I run so fast, there's no ways I'm going to forget. And off he bounded back to the tree. He raced across the plain, all the while thinking, I am so good. I am so amazing. Look how fast I can run. Of course, I'm going to get there before I forget the name, Ungali. He was running so fast and thinking so hard about how amazing he was that he didn't see the little rabbit hole near the tree. And as his hoof hit that rabbit hole, he went hoof over tail, hoof over tail, and landed in a splatter of dust at the base of the tree. The animals gathered round. <gasps> what is the name of the tree? Uh, I can't remember. And anyway, my hoof is sore. What are we going to do now? Cried the animal. And they wept and they wailed so much. But Elephant ambled up and said, I'll go. I forget nothing. And off she went. She tripped across the wide African plain until she came to the other thing was all under the bare bed tree. But this time his hair wasn't all smooth and his tail curled. It was twitching and there were a few hairs out of place. He was not happy. Oh, Majesty, bowed elephant. Please tell me the name of the tree. I will tell you the name, but this is the last time. Do not send another animal. I won't have to, bowed elephant. I know and forget nothing. I know everything and forget nothing. So off elephant went. After hearing the name, Ongali. All across the plain, the elephant walked. Ungali. Of course, I won't forget that name. I know the name of every tree there is. And so she began to recite the names of all the trees on the African plain, then all the trees on the African continent. And by the time she got back to the tree where the animals were, she was on all the trees in the world. And she didn't see the little rabbit hole. Her foot stuck in that. And she stumbled to her knees. While she was trying to pull her big elephant foot out of the hole, the other animals rushed up and said, what's the name of the tree? Um, 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 I can't remember, said elephant. And she pulled her foot out of the rabbit hole and went and sulked under the tree. Now what? The animals just 
didn't know what to do. And then little tortoise stuck up her hand and said, excuse me, I will go. <laughs> you laughed the animals. You, you are so small and you are so slow. Yes, said tortoise, I am small and I am slow. But I also won't forget my great, 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 great grand mother taught me not to forget. And even though the animals turned their backs on her, she turned around and put one tortoise foot in front of the other and slowly moved across the African plain. It took a long time. When she got to where the Lion King was, he was not sitting on a rock under the baobab tree. Oh no, his hair was standing on end. His tail was swishing from side to side. And he roared at her. What are you doing here? Don't even think about asking me the name of the tree. I will never say that it is the Ungali tree. Tortoise bowed. I will not ask your majesty. He turned around with a secret tortoise smile. All the way home, tortoise said, Ungali, Ungali. The name of the tree is Ungali, Ungali, Ungali. The name of the tree is Ungali. He didn't, she didn't forget it. Even when she was sleeping, she was dreaming of that tree. And in her dreams, she was walking around it going, Um, Gali, Um, Gali. The name of the tree is Um, Gali. When Tortoise got back to the tree, she too didn't see the rabbit hole. But it didn't stop her. She fell right in, crawled right up the other side, and stood under the tree looking up at the fruit. The other animals didn't even notice she was back until they heard a small high voice saying, The name of the tree is Ongali. Ongali is the name of the tree. As the name went out, the boughs lowered, so low that even the smallest animal could eat the fruit that smelled like the fruit from all over the world. Every animal could eat to their fill. And they learned a lesson that day that even though tortoise was small, was slow, never to underestimate her. Okay, thank you. So one of the one of the um, aspects of the story that I really loved was that I expected all the animals to work together and and it resonated with me during this time of that we've all been going through where you expect people to work together and then discover that they're not actually working together. So some people prefer to do things on their own, others want to get together and 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 brainstorm and you know um, come to a solution. And there's so many solutions around, which is the right one, um, which is the best one. So that was what resonated with me and why I decided to tell that particular folk tale um, today. But I'm interested to find out from anybody else what they felt, what, did, what resonated with you, which character did you um, identify with or which character did you particularly 
um, like or dislike? What lessons were you, did you learn? Those are lots of questions. <laughs> yes. Master? Hi. Well, anybody, you can just answer one of them. Yeah, just any of them. It doesn't matter. Oh, Hello, I'm Sue. Sorry. I'm David. Oh, hi. Did it, did it. hi, David. I'll, I'll, I, can go, I can go afterwards. Okay. Sorry. Hello. Can you hear me now? Hi. Yes, now I can hear you. Yes. Uh, for me, uh, I mean, the character, the character of the tortoise was uh, a happy character because he sang all the way and that is how he remembered and because he was so happy and he kept on singing. So that is what, after falling into the hole also, he remembered the name of the tree <laughs> and he was so happy to share uh, the name to everyone, the little the scream of his from the hole also echoed outside the hole. That's beautiful. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you. And I love the song and the beat that you bought. Oh, golly. It was really nice. Thank you. It brought Thank a lot you. of rhythm in the telling. Yeah. Yeah. It's my personal favorite. David? <laughs> Sorry. I've heard from Jilly as well. Ah, okay. <laughs> Hi, Sue. I was going to Hi. say the same thing, really, that I really liked the tortoise character and the way the tortoise could remember it by being, by singing and using that memory trick. But I'm also yeah. really interested in the origins of this story because it's a story that seems to be really going around at the moment. I'm hearing it from lots mm. of different storytellers. And I'd love mm. to know, is it, it's an African story. Can, do, do you know about the, you know, the precedent, know. The, the provenance of the story? You know, I tried to find out. And um, the only, apparently it's a traditional story told and in different ways all over Africa. And, um, yeah. but it was, it was written down by um, Celia Barker, let me just get her name here, Celia Barker Lotteridge. Um, she was the first person to that I can find to actually write, write it as a story. The rest of the time, it's just been a traditional story that's been told over and over. So I can't say whether it's South African, African, I have no idea which country it comes from. I just know it's from that's, our continent. Yeah, thank you very much. That's what I, that's what I know as well. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Okay, I, I think we need to Thank move on soon. Uh, did anyone else want to say anything or can we close? It's okay. Thank you very much, Sue. That was really wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And now.